Hey guys, how's it going? It's 8-Bit Eric. And one question that I get asked a lot during my streams is, what are your most expensive games or what are your most rarest games? And it's kind of a really hard question because I really don't know. I know there's some that I have that are really on the expensive side and some that are on the rare side. I just can't pick out one single one. But then I really sat down and thought about it and I was like, all right, in my opinion, that's the the most prized possession of my game collection. So I'm going to share with you guys my most prized game out of my collection, but I'm also going to share with you some random games that are considered on the higher end or the more rare end from my collection. Now, I didn't pick out every single one. I have like 630 NES games, like about 200 Super Nintendo and so forth. So it would be impossible for me to sift through all that mess back there. So I picked... What I think are some interesting highlights that you don't really see a lot of people talk about or mention in their collection. Uh, there are some, of course, that I did pull out like Musha and Bucky O'Hare and uh, a couple other ones, Felix the Cat, that are kind of on the higher end. But here we go. I'm going to share these with you guys. If you're brand new to the channel, feel free to throw a subscription. And if you like this video, guys, please click like or dislike it'll help boost it and get it seen but here we go the first game that i want to talk about is a complete in box famicom game this is called crisis force i had no idea that i had this in my collection until i was actually doing my inventory and seeing what i had in my collection this is a shoot 'em up by konami did not come to the united states it's very challenging it's fast paced uh it's it's freaking awesome it has one of the best Konami soundtracks I've ever seen in my life or heard. And it's a disappointment that it didn't come to the United States. But if you want to get it, <laughs> card alone I think is like 75 bucks. I think completing box like this is 175 close to 200 if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I do have a Let's Play of this game coming up in the near future if you guys are interested in it. This is actually in very pristine condition. I even have like the little like promo... Uh, Things that show like different games coming out and stuff like that. Uh, let's pull it out. So it shows like this is like a, a instruction like warranty thing. Uh, we have like a little promo promo package right here showing like different Konami games. We have the the actual manual here, which is really cool. It's interesting because um, it's in really good condition. And of course, we have the game right here. Like, take a look at that. So. Yeah, I didn't even know I had this in my collection until recently. And then I looked up, like when I was inventorying it, um, looked up the price. And I was like, holy cow, are you serious? I just had like almost a $200 Famicom game just sitting here on the shelf. And, and, and wasn't even completely aware of it. So um, it's nice when you figure out that you have like a hidden gem or something that you weren't aware of. Uh, very good gameplay if you haven't tried it out yet. Um, next up, I have another complete in box Famicom game. If you're a big fan of the Earthbound series, you're going to like this. This is Mother. This didn't come to the NES in America. This is the first game of the Mother series, which includes Earthbound on the Super Nintendo. Uh, now, this one kind of is a little bit more primitive. It hasn't aged as well as Earthbound has. Um, it's a very primitive 8-bit <laughs> you know, game in the Earthbound universe. Now... This game is in very pristine condition. It's almost new. The cartridge is wrapped in a wrapper still. And I have like a booklet. I have different stuff. Uh, there's still like a warranty card too in the back. Look how thick and, and full like this, this manual is. Um, my friend actually got me this a while back uh, to add to the collection. And I think it's such a good little centerpiece considering, you know, a lot of people really love the Earthbound series, and I think it just looks really neat on the back. Now, I do have a, uh, a reproduction cart, too, of it localized in English for the NES, but it's really neat to actually have the real game, and I was like, wow, you know, when he first sent it to me. So definitely um, pretty legit to have on here. Who doesn't love Earthbound, right? Now, I have one more Famicom game to share with you guys, and this one is actually a Japanese version of a game in the United States that is way overpriced, but a fantastic game. This is Lickle. 
Now this is the Japanese version of Little Samson. It plays exactly the same. Um, there's no text that you need to read in Japanese really. Um, I bought this for 75 bucks probably like five or six years ago. And it's even gone up in price on its own for the Japanese version. But if you're looking for an alternative of Little Samson and you don't want to pay the over a thousand bucks that the game costs now, um, get the Famicom version while you can. It's getting up there in price. Uh, it plays exactly the same. No no major differences. So yeah, now we're going to move to the um, American consoles. I have one Super Nintendo game that I busted out for you guys, and it is Earthbound. Um, I bought this for 80 bucks back in like 2012, 2013, somewhere around there. Found a decent deal, 80 bucks, free shipping. Um, I only got it loose card only. <laughs> I wasn't going to go and get the big box with the manual and all that because just way too pricey uh now i'm not a big rpg fan i'm not a big earthbound fan but i just know 80 dollars for this game is a great deal and you know it does have its moments it does have its memories uh, i do like the personality and the charm and the quirkiness that this game has it's hailed as probably one of the greatest video games of all time and uh, i just needed to get it at 80 bucks because th even then cart only of this has been pretty hard to find pretty expensive so why not just get it and then uh, I have Action 52 on the NES. My condition is actually chipped. It has a chip right here. But I bought this at Con Bravo in 2015, I believe, for about 100 bucks or so. Um, and it is a sought-after game. It's not too common. You know, it is, as, as far as the rarer games go, this one's seen in the wild a lot more. But uh, for 100 bucks, I couldn't skip out on that. Um, and that was... Uh, I think 120 Canadian and it was about a hundred dollars us that I was able to get it. So I was like, all right, I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to take it. So I have an action 52 and the game sucks, but it's a nice little centerpiece to actually have on your shelves. Uh, and then uh, we got an infamous game. If you follow game chasers and everything with the slipping and all that battle toads, double dragon. Uh, I actually got this in Canada as well. ANC games. I got this with mighty final fight. I got both this and Mighty Final Fight for $100 total American, which is a great deal considering that this is a $100 game on its own and so is Mighty Final Fight. So I basically got both games for the price of one. Um, very great game. Uh, now, this one was a game that was actually donated to me, uh, sent to my P.O. Box a few years ago by a, a good friend of mine named Thanos. And uh, this is Beauty and the Beast. It's a PAL game. And it's De Sion and Und Das Beast. I don't know how to speak German, but it is a PAL game. And uh, you don't see too many people talk about this one. Uh, I have only played it a couple times. Um, it's PAL Region B, so I think that might be like German and stuff like that. Um, thought it was pretty neat. Again, it's a game that you really don't see too many people talk about it. I also have Smurfs. Uh, he sent me Smurfs as well. So two really uncommon games in the United States. And then last but not least, before we get to the game that I feel is the most prized, is Zombie Nation. And I bought this at Game On Expo for 300 bucks. This is the most I spent on a game. Um, at the time, I was pretty well off with my money. I had a great job uh, that was an office job that was giving me about like almost $15 an hour and I had PTO and great benefits and stuff. So I was pretty well loaded at the time and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Fuck it. Um, it's a shoot 'em up type of game. You play as like a big giant head and there's a whole bunch of chaos and stuff like that. Very hard game, but it's kind of also one that I've never seen in the wild. This was the only time I saw it in the wild and for 300 bucks, I was like, I'm just going to drop it before this becomes a $1,000 game. Cause you know, like, like if I could go back and get Samson for 300, I would do that. So I just bit the bullet and got it. Now, this next game is actually, um, when you look at stuff symbolically, metaphorically, and, and whether you decide, uh, what constitutes a game being expensive or rare or priceless or a prized possession, uh, this one actually is not the rarest game not the most expensive game out there, but there's, there's a real reason why it means a lot to me. And this is probably my most prized video game in my whole entire collection. It is a copy of uh, PlayStation 1, Greatest Hits, WCW versus the World. Again, 
it's not the most rarest game or anything, but to me it is because uh, my friend, Keeb the Joking Gamer, who passed away a few years ago uh, due to complications because of his, his health condition, uh, actually autographed it. So if you could see right here at the top, and it's kind of hard to see. Let me turn the light just a little bit. Let's see if it helps it out. You can see he autographed the top. And um, he did it on permanent marker. Now, some people are like, Eric, why do you have it in a real crummy case? You know, the case looks bad. It's cracked. Everything like that. Because there, there's one major issue with it. <laughs> it's not the best case. You can see it, it comes off. It comes apart. Um, the game, it has the manual and everything. But the main issue here is Keeb actually signed the actual jewel case. <laughs> not the manual. Which is why I have it in the case. So I saw somebody a while back go, you don't even care about Keeb and you have it in a crappy jewel case. Well, the reason why is because he actually signed the crappy jewel case for whatever reason. And he gave this to me um, without me knowing. He This was a game I think he bought and then he signed it and was like, hey, Eric, um, I have a game for you. Do you want it? And I'm going to sign it for you. And I was like, you know what, dude? Yeah. Um, he passed away. This was the first and only time that I ever met him was at Con Bravo. I think it was 2013. I went to Con Bravo specifically to meet Keeb. I wasn't going to go to the con at all, but I went. I wasn't even a guest. Tagged along with Pro Jared, Heidi, and uh, the Game Chasers just to go see Keeb. That was my main mission. He drew a dick on it too, and he wrote his name. And I tried to keep this away from the rest of my collection because it it is coming, like, rubbing off. And I don't want to lose this autograph because this is one of the only actual physical memories that I have of my friend. And I had a fucking dynamic relationship with Keeb. Um, he was a bastard. <laughs> we used to talk a lot of shit with each other, especially on Skype. Um, he was one of the biggest trolls I knew in my life. And, and a lot of people assume stuff and... and think um because i've i've trolled under a alt account of his name i, I have a when a long time ago me and keeb made alter egos of, of of him like uh baron von keeb a couple of that and we would he would troll a lot of people under those and i had access to them too and um we used to talk a lot of shit he used to call me a dirty mexican and like a few other slurs that I don't want to say on here. And I would always call him a stupid fat midget and stuff like that. So we had we had one of those relationships where our terms of endearment were, were shit talking and stuff like that. So um, definitely do miss him. He was a good friend. It broke my heart that he passed away um, suddenly too. I remember he was actually calling me the night before he was found dead because he was celebrating getting 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, he was very excited about that. And um, next thing you know it, the next day he was found, passed away. It was it was a very unfortunate incident at the time. And it, it, and it was a double whammy um, out of nowhere because I had a few other friends in that month pass away. But Keeb, um, you do stand um, a great memory in my heart, my mind. And especially with this, is your no other video game in the world. I don't care what it is. It could be a prototype that Miyamoto um, signed of Mario 3. Um, nothing will ever replace this WCW versus the world signed game by Keep the Joking Gamer in my collection. Um, one of the bestest friends I ever had. And you're missed. Uh, to this day, I think about you every day, man. And... I can always look back and, and remember that weekend that we had at Con Bravo. So just wanted to share with you guys some of my most prized games, my rarest ones, stuff like that. I appreciate you. Um, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on what you think of the video. Um, help me out by sending this out in the algorithm by liking it or disliking it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks a lot as always. Have a great day. Peace out.